An independent candidate. Yes. Abby Laurel Smith. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Now, you are, you have been a working artist. You yes. poet and a painter. All my life since the age of two. That's all I've ever done. But you've also described yourself as a nihilist. I'm not sure that that is the best word <laughs> to, for someone who is running for mayor to describe I, himself I, as. I think I have moved away from that period. Oh. So I am different now. I'm very relieved. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Do you have I'm more of a realist now, and I think let's get the city back to business. That's what I would say. So yeah, do you have a plan thing. for supporting the arts in New York? Do you see that? Uh, I guess you have a bias because you've been a working artist. Uh, yes and no. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, I think, first of all, we have to look at the education system, and also we have to educate the people that are grown up in business, the people that we come across every day. A lot of people don't know anything about art, they don't know anything about culture, they don't know anything about dance, and they look at it from the business model. It doesn't work like that, it is different. Art is a creative endeavor. It is what makes us what we are today. It tells us where we were before and where we're going. And um, there's a lot to it. What's um, the best thing a city of New York and a mayor running a city of New York can do to, to, to encourage and nurture that spirit of art? As a mayor, you have the power to do a lot. Like I said, from school, the way people are taught about art. Also, you also have to let people know that there's a different, a huge gap between artist and artist. One without an E, the other one with an E. The best way to go about that is to let people realize that what we're being given or handed, what we see every day from Hollywood is not actually what you could call or equate to art or culture. So if you want to fund art, you have to go to the basics. Fund the real art, the artists, the organizations that support them, make it easy for them to live in the city and to practice their job. I mean, what they love to do. Uh, there's also what we call appreciation. That is something that is not in the curriculum, which means if you cannot draw or paint or play music or appreciate um, or write, you should at least learn certain keywords to be able to understand what art is all about. You need to know, um, learn the language. And that, that way it becomes easier for you to relate to no, art. It no. becomes easier for you to relate to the people who practice these things. It becomes easier for you to see where they're coming mm -hmm. from. No, and I'm, that I'm, way it will be easier for anyone who's a mayor to say, yes, I want to support the art. I want to increase funding for the arts. I was curious about your saying that we're not Hollywood. actually. We are becoming Hollywood to some degree. We have four major film studios in Brooklyn and Long Island City, okay. and more and more filming is being done here, adding a lot to the uh, the, the city's income. Um, yes, but you, you think that that's less important than the other. I would say it's less important, but the question is, how many artists do they have on the film set when they were making the films? Well, they're hiring a lot of people to They use. hire a lot of people, but they don't hire artists. Artists could look at a film script and draw up different kind of things and even give you options and say you can film this this way, you can film this that way, or you can go this way, or you can create your stage in this way, on this manner, approach your film in this way. I've never seen any artist on the film set. Artists have been a way screened out. One we could argue that, so. that motion filmmakers and actors are artists, but that's maybe a semantic uh, well, question. We belong to the union. Fine uh, artists have an edge. Have I'm an edge? A, yes, they have an edge when it comes to creating things like that or setting up stages. I do it. I've done it for Kenny Branagh. But, but f for a fine artist like yourself, yes. should the city of New York be handing out money to you? Or how, how should that work? The city of New York, I won't say the city should hand out money to me. 
But if the city is going to give me something as an artist, or if the city is going to give artists something, they should say, OK, we have this program. You'll be in this building for maybe a year or two. Whilst you're working and practicing or painting, you could as well teach these kids, or you could be involved in this project. If, there, if you set up something like that, you will bring a lot of artists into the city. Uh -huh. You will make practicing in the city easier because a lot of artists can't afford the rent. And, and again, speaking as yes. the first practicing present artist on our stage tonight, what keeps you here? I want to change things. I want to change things for the way they are now because it shouldn't be this way. We are heading towards a crash, a huge crash. We need to see it for what it is, and we need to approach it for what it is. We cannot solve it by going with the business approach, which means take this out, take that out, ship this off, and do it this way. It won't work. For example, look at what is happening in um, Staten Island, the people who got affected by a hurricane. A lot of them are firefighters. A lot of them are veterans. A lot of them work in the police department. They don't have houses to go to anymore. It is affecting their job performances. Not just that, their kids are failing. Look at some of them have third graders. They have to do exams. They have to perform. They don't have ways and means to study at home. That is affecting their performances. It shouldn't be so. That is why I got into this race which means I have removed myself from being an artist. I'm coming into this because I think I could do this this way, I could do this that way. But I, in the process of getting into this race, yes, I had about 1% funding, asking for more. It could be from the source, it could be from tax, it could be from private businesses, it could be from all kinds of things. But we need to look into that. And do you think you, as an artist, uh, being mayor of New York City, would m be able to, to accomplish all the administrative managerial decisions that, that uh, are required of a mayor, making those tough fiscal choices and so on? Yes and no, because if I say yes, I can do it, then I'll be seen as a dictator. <laughs> but in a way, you need to drive the engine. You need to set up something and set up a goal. But you also have to remember that the city runs with different set of people. You have those that are elected. You have those that are professionals who are not elected. You have to put the professionals in their place and let them do their job. You cannot bring people from outside who did not have any experience about what works in that area to tell them, this is how I want. Where did you go to school? I studied in Oxford. Uh -huh. I used to be a professional student. I studied history of art and heritage management. Mm -hmm. And but before then, I studied fine art. And before then, I studied music history. But you have had no experience of New York City schools. So uh, much of the discussion tonight has been about how great, I don't know how great they really were, because uh, I have some sad memories, but how great <laughs> they used to be yes. and how terrible they are today. Um, yes. you, you, you would be expected to improve things without really knowing what's gone wrong. Um, we, uh, Kurt has been talking about just um, how many schools are working right now without art teachers, full-time art teachers, without full-time music teachers. They often rely on outside groups to come in and pick up the slack, which is not the worst thing in the world, but... It is the worst. To well, it, it's been, been for long, it, it also, it also is a way that artists make money, and it's a way that the kids come in contact with real artists, which I think is quite good. But it does not really take the place of having a full-time teacher in a, a school uh, that, the, that uh, can teach regular classes. Because the commitment is not there. You put the teacher in a situation where he or she has got to think about if I'm doing this part-time, then I've got to go somewhere else as a sort of time to do something else. It shouldn't be. We need people that will be there day and night, professional teachers. So if you have people who have gone to art school, the real art school who studied fine art, then it is better for them to have like a teaching certificate afterwards. If they have that, it will be easier for them to teach and practice at the same time. We need people like that in the city. And the best way to do that is to, like I said, housing 
is important for artists. If, um, I mean, I'd love to build, I'd love building houses, I'd love building properties. I mean, it's one of the things that I studied, and which is one of the reasons that I'm in this race. I'd love to build a lot of affordable houses in the city. Now, finding the land to build or finding properties to build is another thing because there are certain things you have to look at. I was just um, in contact with a community board nine, or something, which is around this area, because I go around and I read all the buildings around the world, about, uh, everywhere. But my point is um, we need professional teachers, not part-time teachers. They should be musicians who have worked in the field, who have practiced in the field, who knows how to relate to kids. Also, they need to have a teaching certificate. That is very important. But we need to have a system in place that will bring them into the city, make them comfortable to sit in the city, and make them comfortable to teach. When you have, were working as a painter, yes. did you feel that the city was supportive of you as an artist who um, wanted to show, who... Uh, no, not at all. But if I should want to think of, in the city? If I should think of myself about as a painter, I think I have been extremely lucky. Because I used to copy at the Metropolitan Museum. I've had exhibitions in a lot of places. And I've done a lot of things that most people, most artists cannot do. They used to call me Michelangelo in Venice. I didn't realize that until I got to New York. I didn't realize how good I was until I was here. So. The city has not been supportive, but certain people in the city have been very supportive. Out of, say, 100% of people that I've met, I would say like less than 1% have been, which is why I said people need to know more about art, they need to know more about culture, they need to know more about where art is coming from, how important it is for us. I'd love to go all over the city and see performances, music, classical music, I can say that. I'd love to see people perform Shakespeare. Shakespeare is the simplest thing you could perform with like maybe one bench, two bench, you have. I haven't seen that around. It's not just a performance, you learn the language, you learn a lot of things from all of this. That is based in New York. Mr. Laurel Smith, it has yeah. been a pleasure meeting you, talking to you. Thank you. Thank you very much.